All right, so let's resume from yesterday. We spoke about you know, structure unions, bit fields, bitwise operators. Yes. And then we jumped into you know how the way different ways of using the functions, the style of the function, correct? And so, so take some example to extend. So the first example I'm going to extend today is going to be about how can you use the main function and how you can have parameters in main function and what do they mean? Okay. okay. Yeah. So we spoke about user defined function. We spoke about some example of standard library function, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. So let's try to see how um, main takes parameter and what does it mean? You know? okay. So the idea is the concept of command line arguments. You know? So you must have seen a lot of utilities which we design. Uh, yeah, how do I give you an example? Let's take. Uh, okay, why is it an error? Maybe I'm live or something. Yeah, it should be fine, right? Just one second, you know. I think I should pause. Yeah. <clears throat> So what we can do here is explain you about some commands. Say if I say ls, it is just an exe file which is running, correct? Yes. So yes. somebody created an output file called as exe. Mm -hmm. And now if I wanted to pass some option, say dash l. So this is an example of a long list. And what is this called as? This is called as command line arguments. You know? Okay. Now if I say dash a it's an example of again the another parameter being passed so this is the first parameter this is the second parameter so tomorrow you know we want to develop command line arguments like this you know so this is what is an example of what command line argument it's very handy when we develop some utility for example you are developing some shell bootloader shell or something or you boot shell you must have seen yeah. So they provide some basic commands, say IP config. Mm -hmm. And then you want to say ETH zero. Then you want to give an IP range. So maybe 192.168.1.100. Then maybe you want to give some port number. So what are these? This is a exe program, couple of file name, exe file name. And then that command is followed by this command line argument. Okay. Okay. So it's possible that you know, so to you know program in C by accepting these command line arguments. Okay. And in that case, we need to learn how to pass these command line arguments in main. So I'll just say that CMD line. So you know in main you can pass at least a two or a three parameter. So main refers to int, which is called as argc. Argc refers to a variable which will maintain the count of the argument which you have passed at runtime. So say if you say IP config ETH zero, then IP address and the put number, then total amount of argument is count is going to be three. Okay, so that is what it will keep the total amount of count about the argument. And then you can pass the command line argument. So one of the signature is argv, which is a pointer to a pointer. It means it is arrays of pointer. It accepts a string. Uh, another formal, you know, way of understanding this, that the main function is like n star argv of. This is also popular. You know, so both are in same. Line number two and three is interchangeable. Oh. Only the difference is here we are giving a feeling that you know it's an array of argument which will be passing. Okay. But you know every array gets converted to a pointer in the yes. parameter yes. function, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
Now the thing is, how do we catch these special things? So first and foremost, we will try print about printf mod d is the total total number of param passed, and I'm just going to print the. The arg c, you know, something like this. If you look at it. So, what will be happening is if you do not pass any parameter, arg c will be updated. Okay. And we can say, we can enforce also sometimes that how many arguments do you want to print. So, we can say something like, you know, say in i and say for. I assigns to zero or less than arg c, and then plus plus i. So we will start with one. The reason arg v of zero is the file name itself or the command name. So I would like to print that. Print it. Mod s is the file name itself. Oh, okay. So the first argument, because you say dot slash a dot e, e out or hello dot exe, so that hello dot exe or just hello file, that is nothing but the first program name or the file name. So file name or program name. And that will be arg v of one. Yeah, sorry, zero. Zero, yeah. yeah. And the moment we say it goes from i is equal to one, so I can keep printing all the, I'm just trying to print all the commands which we are passing, not taking any action, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, say if you wanted to do like mod s slash n, so then we can say something like arg of i is equal to mod s and then I can say i comma so this instead of i I can format that to be mod d so instead of i it will print the value right and then I can say r p of i so I'm just trying to you know, print all of them away let's see how does uh, my result look like so I'll say GCC command line. That's it. Okay, I'm ignoring this warning as of now. Okay. okay. I'll make this output file name as well, CMD line. As you know, means we put a header for this completion. Okay. So it's pretty yeah. Good. So that warnings can be ignored. And now you see, when I say CMD line, what does it say? One is the total amount of param, which is this. And this is the command line, okay? The other has been repeated here, message. Is the, is what I wanted to type there. So you, if you observe, because we didn't pass any parameter or passed any argument, it has just printed that one command which I passed. This is the first command, right? Count is only one. And then CMD line it was my file name or the program, correct? Okay, so nothing is, I mean, in the for loop there. Ah. Now you see what will happen. Oh, okay. Because argc was one, no? so one is not less than one. So it false, so it didn't get inside the for loop, right? Okay, okay. So what is to be noticed, the system is automatically updating this variable argc. The moment you start passing this parameter, so how many parameters we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So total count is what? Seven. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it? And then we have something like command line, is the file name, which is anyway accepted. 
Now we are trying to collect which is the arg v of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So arg 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And whatever you pass over here, it is a string. You can also pass something like this in double quotes. In this case, it's only two parameters. Okay. You understood, right? Yes. Yeah. So a space becomes something like, you know, a, a separator for a command line counting. Okay. okay. So yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to you know develop some utilities like this. Say for example, tomorrow you want to generate a program. Say if I give you an assignment that okay, say copy file one, file two. It means what? I want to generate a command which will copy the content of file one into a new file called as file. So new file. I can give you an example of say old file. So what does it mean? Arg of one refers to the old file. Correct? Arg of two refers to the new file. Similarly, I can give you another assignment. Say, even why don't you do something like, you know, say calculate. And then you say sum. And then you take any numbers. So all these command line arguments can be performed what? for a sum or calculate it with say plus as a symbol. Hello. Okay, I think I have lost Vinu. Just hang on. No worries. Okay. So, all right, we knew we were talking about this command line argument. And I said, you know, there can be different ways of developing some programs. Say, I want to develop a utility, something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try to do something like this. Say, cal plus, and then these numbers. Okay. Or I want to have something like cal, and then I would say minus n. In this case, I will not give all the numbers, but only say two numbers. And I get a results accordingly. This is not a command. I mean, we need to develop that. So what you can use this command line argument to perform that job. Okay. So just wanted to explain you that whenever you pass these, even though as a number, it is internally treated as what? Strings. Okay. So then if you have to do some numeric calculation based on these numbers, you need to convert them into the numbers. So how do you convert a string to a number? Okay, something like ATOI. So these are some functions defined in standard library. So ATOI, so what it does, it converts an ASCII text to an integer. So as you can see, it is expecting a string to be passed and it will return an integer. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you have ATOL, L as in long. Okay. Then ATOLL, long, long. It means 32 bit, right? And then it's a quad. AT, long quad. So long, long quad. It means it goes pretty large, you know, numbers. A very good example is also explained. You know, it functions by reassigning the value to. There are some other variants also. Suppose if you want to convert a string into a float value, also, A to A O F. Okay. okay. And 
A T O F. So now you can convert. You take the string, but it will convert that to a double. Okay. okay. So with this, can we try this quick as an example right now? Suppose let's try. We want to have some calculator file to be created. So just wanted to show you one sample. You complete this entire program later in this weekend if you get some time. Okay. Stdio.h and me. Absolutely, I will go for argument C and character star argument V. And now I'm gonna say if arg C is not equal to. So I'm expecting that, you know, there should be four arguments. If it is not, then I'm going to give some error to them, say printf. Okay. Must pass four arguments. Okay. So example. <clears throat> Let's give them some help also. Say okay. plus something. To get the sum. And then exit from the pool. Okay. okay, something like this. And if it is passed, if it is not passed, you will get this message. If they have already passed, then we'll have something like a switch. And here we expect argument C, right? So the second argument is something which is a symbol, which is string. So I need to pass arg v of one, right? Zero is the file name. One is going to be my symbol. So I'm going to put this into an ATOI, an integer. Okay. So if you pass say plus, it will convert it into some specific integer. Okay. Venu, just give me one sec. Sure. Huh? I have one call, sorry. Sure. Just a minute. <laughs> Thanks, Venu. No so I was trying to say, you know, this is a plus, and that plus can be converted into uh, some integer value. Okay? okay? And I can take that as a choice. So, and I'll say if you know choice is equal to a plus. Okay. Okay. Then we'll perform the sum. So I can say print f the sum of the D and the D is okay. So here what we could do is ATOI of argv of two. Okay. From ATOI argv of three. And then here we'll say ATOI argv of two. Once again. A uh, good idea is that we could have stored it into a variable and then, you know, uh, perform this job. So it becomes, we could reduce the number of function calls. So that you could take it as a part of optimization, you know, okay. because you're calling the function again and again. So it's going to be costing a lot of jump and return, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so instead of that, why don't you call once and convert that and store into two variables and then just do an operation. 
So you can reduce the number of function calls, right? Yes. Yeah. I thought we can fill in. So something like this is the idea. Now we'll say GCC L dot C minus O. Okay. If there are some errors. R not defined, so you know the count is arc C. I mean, I can use any other variable also here, but conventionally we use this name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that first, let's try it. Okay, then it says uh, it is expecting stdio dot h. So that's there still lib dot h. That contains ATUI and exit success macros. Okay, now we have something else here. Too many arguments in the function E to OI. So I think somewhere is where it is scribbing is here. Um, it expects the, the addition for every... Uh, no, 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 here, 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 syntax. I have not closed it after the array, the second parameter. Okay. Yeah, that was the reason. So now if I say just cal, you can see it says must pass four argument. It's giving an example. Mm -hmm. So I'll say cal plus say 123, 40. Okay, and I think it's not, uh, it couldn't get into this, right? Yeah. Otherwise it should have printed this, isn't it? Okay. It's gone to an else part. So plus was a string and we converted into a choice. So yeah, what it's doing is, can you check? This is a string value. So I should have taken this and I should have done A-T-O-I, something like this. I mean, I can also give other number like one is for some, two is for some, that's not intuitive. Okay. You know, so just we were trying to ensure that's a string. So A-T-O-I will give us some value, right? It will convert. It's not an integer. Now, this may not work well. Mm -hmm. why, why we can think of this? Because A2OI is a function which will take a string and Maybe. convert into a number. Yes. So that equivalent number must match. So if I print the value here, twice is equal to mod d slash n. And then we will say choice. So at least we know what is the converted value from that plus. Mm -hmm. And then we try to see if ATUI can still perform because it can definitely take the string, right? Yeah. So now you can see it is as expected. So what was the reason? The moment we use a single code, it tries to convert in, into a specific uh, ASCII value, okay. which is an integer. And that's a different value than the conversion value as a string to a number. You know? As you can see, the choice is say something like zero it is. It's failed. A to I to A to I plus I know is a hard code. Not a very good you know, logic to complete this program. In fact, we can plan something like switch or something okay. where we take some. So if there is some, I'll say string compare. You know? Another option could be, I could say something like sum and then perform the job. So in that case, we could directly store this into a string. Okay. And we don't need to convert also. Probably, we can directly say 
F STR CMP. So there's an API called as STR CMP, string comparison. Mm -hmm. Well, hard code. I know if somebody is trying to pass some, and that will be compared with what? R V of one, correct? So a string compared as what? It compares one string to another. If it is correct, if it is zero means it is true. Then perform the sum, something like this. So now I'm not using that plus logic. I'm using a sum uh, logic, something like this. Now you can see that. Um, not sure I understood the yes, animation. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say the 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 command line argument is always a string, okay? Okay. So one of the logic is instead of converting that string, which is a symbol, to a unique number, which will not be possible, right? Plus is a symbol, right? Yeah. Yeah. I cannot. It's not a number in it, right? It is not a number. Unlike if you say one, two, three, or forty-five, though it is in a string format, it is a number. Agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if I convert this string into a number, it is a legal conversion, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I mean by this is that if I say something like an array, just trying to type here, okay, and say 45, though I'm writing number, it is actually stored as a string. Agree? Yes. Yeah. So I'm yeah because it is a as a string I put into a double quote yeah it's a, but it's a it's a digit so if I legally remove this string from here and convert into a number it is possible because forty five right forty five is a number yeah correct yeah now imagine if I just give a symbol now plus is not a number it is not a digit it's a symbol yeah it's a symbol so I cannot expect it to have a legal number value. It may have an ASCII value, but plus is not a digit. It's not zero, it is not one, it is not nine. It is nothing in between zero to nine. Agree? Yes. yes. So it will always fail to perform an ATOI. Okay. Why? Because ATOI is meant to say, take a string and convert into a legal number. So such strings, which actually is stored as a number, will be converted as a legal number. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, a little, little, you know, uh, confusing maybe for you, but to explain you that the format of the string which represents the number, okay, can be converted to a numerical number. It means you can do the calculation on that. Yeah, uh, the one thing that's uh, ah. confusing to me is uh, like the ADOI of OI of or, or, argument two. Ah, ah, so that ah. corresponds to the second. Um, uh, the third one. Uh, sorry, third one, right? Yeah, 123. It refers to 123. So, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to convert the string to a number. Okay, and then the number three, that is 45. Ah, ah 45. Again, that also I'm converting into a, a number. If I don't do that, yeah. I may not be, because it is to a string internally. The representation of the number is as if it is a, yeah. Stored as a string, got it? Yeah. So and then the second, <clears throat> yeah, where second one comes into picture here. So that is uh... the sum. The sum is a string anyway. So I'm just comparing whether the strings are equal or not. Oh, okay, okay. So when you pass R V of one, that is also a string, and this is also a string. Okay, okay. Correct. So yeah. suppose if somebody passes. Uh, instead of here, say diff, <clears throat> it won't work. Why? Because diff and sum are not equal. So here, R V of one will have what? Diff. So we are trying to compare two strings, sum and diff, which is not correct. Sum and diff are two different strings, so it fails this statement and comes out. Okay. Okay. So you know, just to look on this, we can see man str cmp. So it takes one of the string and another string and compares both. And it says 
it returns an integer less than or equal to or greater than zero if S1 is found respectively to be less than or match. Okay. If, if it is similar, it will always return zero. So zero is a good condition for me to check mm -hmm. if it is equal or the same string. Okay. Right. Yeah. And equal in the sense, it could be in both the ways. For example, it doesn't care about the case as well. So if I say SUM, now you see it is very careful about the case. Capital SUM. Oh. And this is not so. Now, if you want to entertain both, there is a variation there. Called as STR ICM. Or STR CMP IOs. Okay. Which talks about, you know, ignore case kind. Okay. Oh, str i c m p i think yeah it's not there str you know there is an uh, this is n actually there is also a concept called as ignore case maybe here in this library it is not supported okay, okay. so what we we do is if you pass that i c m p it means it doesn't care whether it's a lower case or an upper case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why it will perform this job. Okay. So like this, you can try to complete this by using a switch or by using any fails to complete the other part of the program. Okay. So like say, do a division, do a multiplier, do a modulus, do a, do a you know, simple calculations. So, so this program will have four cases. So whenever, you know, program in command line is passed with, you know, uh, I would say, say product, then it should multiply 123 into, you know, four five. If I say diff, then it should give 123 minus uh, something. Okay, if I say modulus, then it should say 125 modulus 45. So result of that, which is percentile. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you may try to, you know, uh, yeah, try. Yeah, try. Yeah, yeah, try. <clears throat> now, see, one more thing which is uh, I didn't spoke uh, to you earlier about that. You know, when you run the program here, you know, there's a lot of environmental variable which gets passed along with this, which you don't see usually. Okay. Environmental variables in the shell is represented by capital variables, like say, echo dollar path, mm -hmm. echo shell, echo term, which terminal type you're using. You know? mm -hmm. So these are the different kinds of environments. You must remember, we had also used some like LD underscore config underscore path. Do you remember this? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, we were trying to specify that where is my shared library path, correct? Mm -hmm. So that when an exe runs, it will try to load the library required by you. Dynamic linker will resolve that program, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that was the another idea. Okay. So how do we trap this and how do we catch this? So it's possible that you, know, you have one more variable pass which is including this as an environment variable. So, yeah, I can move this up. So what we do, we also introduce one more thing here, which is an director star E and B environment. Maybe just T and V are here. It's also in a string. And what we could do is, uh, you know, print them as well. I've deleted this because the result in the previous example is in the back. So I hope you can print that. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll not be using any of these. And I'll get back to the program which we had in some online. Oh, sorry, sorry. And, and, uh, C. Yeah. So I'll take this program part and we'll try to see that if we can, you know, print uh, these here, environment will. Now we want to be printing a command line, but we'll be printing the environment will. So I will say env of i. Okay. And this is less than the argument C. So I will not say something like argument C. I will just say, say I want to just print first 10 of the argument value and see if it is there. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else. So I'll say GCC in this name, file name is calc.c minus cal. Then I'm going to cal. So you can see different kinds of environmental variables are getting printed to you. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Some of them we tried like shell, mm -hmm. term, terminal type, which we are using and so on and so on. So if we put say some hundred, all the hundred command line, if applicable, you know, if all the hundred command lines are available, it will print all of them. Pretty interesting to know that, okay, what are the commands which has been passed? So I think it has gone beyond. So that's why it's crashing. So giving you a meaning here. Oh. After 54, there's nothing. There's nothing. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's a good one. But at least we know all those basic variables which has been passed here. Very strong way of understanding, you know? Like okay. user is a root. So by knowing, printing this, I can know, okay, who is the user, whether it's a normal user or, okay. or a root user, what kind of, you know, color coding in LS command is using to print out the driver. Okay. okay. Actual username which is using session manager is managed by which? Okay. What is the graphics? Where is the mail configured? What directory? Session type is what? What is the default path which has been passed? What is the current or a working directory? Print the working directory. Mm -hmm. So all these things you know can be printed. It's sometimes very important to know what you know environment variables are passed in order to you know have this program running so you know sometimes you need to set up some path which is not there by printing you know it is already there or not and you can take actions accordingly right okay. helps in yeah. Debug. yeah it really helps in debugging seriously so i thought you should know this as well very seldom used but we should know this okay. as a developer <clears throat> most of the time you know we know that what we are trying to initialize right Always good to know that what we are initializing. Yes. If not, at least to this state, it should be known to all of us. Okay. Yeah. So I think now it is okay. I think that brings to the you know main argument being passed. Okay. Now we'll talk about some variable argument list. Okay. And take uh, then our list. Before we get into you know uh, variable argument list, I will explain about one problem. Okay. So assume that you know you have written some algorithm which takes two input, or you have decided to have a function say int. I'll have a function sum and I'll have int x and int y. And my idea is to have return x plus y. Okay. Yeah. I have a function like this. I'll have say no, demo and uh, y demo and here is where we're calling sum and i have a result here tomorrow suppose you know you want to have a change in your program mm -hmm. saying that some customer is saying 
Okay, I want uh, to find the sum of uh, three numbers. So one of the thing is you can say, okay, I can have one more parameter introduced. Right, I can say total is multi slash n. And I can say result. So this is anyway understood that it will be printing as expected. Okay. And the idea is tomorrow this guy is saying that hey, I want to pass third parameter here. Or four, or five, or six. Right. Now this will become cumbersome because every time you introduce a new parameter, my previous code program will break, correct? Yes. Yeah. I have to keep introducing the parameter. So how to tackle this? A concept is without changing this function definition, how do you achieve it? Okay. Yeah. I don't want to change the yeah. parameter. But still, I want the user to be able to pass any number of parameters and print them without changing the source code. Okay. Because this can be uh, an SO file, right? I can be pushing this definition in the library. Okay. And the user can just consume this. Okay. Correct? Right? Yeah. You remember we built some functions, a string and math across and put an SO file separate. Dot A file, dot SO file. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Anything. So we're just including them. So imagine that this definition here is a part of those SO5. So can you change that? Um, in SO5, we cannot change, right? Because I have given you an SO file. I've already given a DLL file to you. Yeah, we can't change. It's a binary distribution. How do you change that? Yeah. I'll give you a header file. Header file will say, hey, call this function, have to, to you know, parameter. So there is a concept called as chaining which works. Function chaining. Which is nested calls. It is possible to achieve that. So I can say result is equal to sum of, say sum of one comma two comma three. This is fine, fair enough. GCC, Vera minus one, Vera. See that? So did I modify the source code? No. No. And I could still achieve that. Now, uh, if I wanted to do four parameter, much easier. I could say three comma four as well. I could have balanced this. Within a sum, there is one more sum and then one more sum. So six plus four, it should be 10. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. So this is all because of the nested or function chaining. A lot of people are not aware about these kind of very small cheeky tricks, which can save a lot of time rather than, you know, Calling the OEM vendor and drilling it, <laughs> and they like, can you modify one more function? That guy will never, you know, pick your call again if you raise a ticket also, <laughs> because he knows that yeah. <laughs> if he starts entertaining the parameter changes, the, yeah. the the team will keep asking new new parameters, right? Like. <laughs> never end. <laughs> so yeah, so. It's, so chaining is a good choice. It's much easier, you know. Okay. But it can it can only have that certain data type to be you know managed and controlled, right? Okay. Assume that if you wanted to have n number of different parameters to be passed, okay, n number of any number of parameters with different data types to be passed, then this also may not you know work out for us, right? Because here the type is fixed. Yeah. So assume you want to define 
you want to enforce a developer or or the consumer or the client code to say that see uh, you can pass any number of parameter but the first one should be this the second should be this third should be this if you do not follow a certain order in the type the behavior is anti okay? okay so in that case is where variable argument comes in which let's take a function called as any where my first data is a known data type and the second one is a three ellipses so i would say now enter the known is known any root known d because i know it's an integer and i can print them up by printing the value observe in me and i will say no i don't need argument here I'm just skipping that i want any to be passed with first has to be 10 and from here i'll say it is a string okay then i'll say it is a double then i will say it's a character then i will say it is a long number you know and then i will say it's another number then i will say again it is a string I hope she didn't spoke about this code that it is very cool. Just kidding. Yeah. So you see, I'm not you know catching up the parameters. You see, so passing of the any number of parameter is accepted right now. Okay. passing has no restriction correct by having this three ellipses now what am i achieving i am passing any number of parameters right it is 10 string this whatever correct yeah 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 so any any is uh... any is just my name any you can use any function just like printf you know oh like printf okay yeah any any name it means it's your choice to have any function name you know oh, okay So you can give some meaningful name. I have just uh, given this name just to explain that any any parameters can be passed. Yeah. Okay. 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 So function name can be anything you want. Okay. Yeah. So what we are trying to here accept these, but now the challenge is how do you catch these parameters? Assume that we also have another thing called as a struct. and the right and then i'll say in yeah me and so let the construct device device and so device Eval device assigns to say a hundred is an ID for the device, and then I would say well direct something. What I do is I pass instead of because the string anyway we have called. Uh, but we are passing that eval as well. Okay. Now I'll say okay. So can you see the function is allowing to pass any type of parameters, whether it's a union, user, data, whatever. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now the thing is, how do you catch them, and what is that you want to really achieve? 
by passing them. How do you hold them? How do you create meaning out of them? How do you store them here in this function, in any function, correct? And that is what is done by a set of macro like, you know, function like macros. We call it. It's called as VAR. So for that, we have something like standard arg.h file. And these people support Just show you. VA underscore star, VA underscore end, VA underscore R are some variable argument list handle. So this header file provides you some function like macros. What it says that first start your VA list is a data type, it's a string actually. Okay. okay, so how does it work is how do you trap this is the first one is anyway known to you. So this entire thing will be stored in a string. Okay. okay. Which is by using initializing this entire lex in a VS star as a syntax, which is in this. VAR takes this list, it means it will take this list here and it will I can say that, that the first one refers to what? The string and it will only return that string. So every time you want to read a, a unknown parameter, what you do is you use an arg, std arg function, which is here. VAR, VAR, VAR. So VAR, what it does, it reads the first parameter and then it points to the next element after the comma, separated comma. Again, it reads, copies the next, and so and so on. Okay. okay. So, and then we can, you know, control them all. So let me show you this with a small example. So what do I do is I first say that I need VA underscore start. First, I need to initialize the list. So I will say AP and the known data type. Now, what do you mean by AP? It is a VA underscore list data type. It's an inbuilt data type called as AP. Okay. Okay. And means if you look at the type def, no, it is internally a character only, string. <clears throat> but just for readability, they have meant it as v underscore list. Okay. And after this, what will happen is this: when you run this function, AP is pointing to this place. Okay. So what I, how do I read it? I would say V underscore R and I say AP is what type of data type? I'm expecting it to be a string data. Type. Yeah. And the macro will return you a, a string itself. So I can say a string. And a string is what? It's a character string type. So I can say string. Okay. And now I can print for the first unknown first unknown is equal to minus. See, I am explaining it. What I say? I am expecting, I am constructing the code where I am expecting that the user will pass the, this element to be a string. If you pass something else, I don't care. Behavior is undefined. He must pass the first element as a string because I have written the program to be treated it as a string only. Okay. So I can dictate the client to call a particular function with certain specific parameter in a certain order itself. Okay. Okay. That is the meaning of this. Let's look at the result of this. What's happening? I could catch that string. Got it? Again, these names can be anything. Variable name can be str, s, a, b, c, whatever. Okay. Line number seven. Okay. But I'm expecting the first one to be string. I got the string. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want to catch the another one. What's that? Again, var will be used. 
now var will be pointing to what the second element which is what i am expecting ap to be a what a double so i'll say say it will be stored in something like d data any name which variable name we can think okay and then i'll go on top and declare the variable never declare the variable in the beginning i never knew that i'll be using this mm -hmm. yeah yeah and of course and now the second one is a double hello and when i say you do for double is it let's try this out Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The precision is six digit. We can change that by formats. We can look at it. How to change that format? Like F three, two point three, like that kind of thing. Okay. So only three digit precision, four digit precision. So. Yeah. Now the third one is what a character. So I will say V underscore R A P. But here instead of uh, it's a character. but the problem is you know whenever this is another note for you whenever a character or you know short variable or a bool variable is passed in a function parameter they all get promoted to an integer oh, sorry i i missed a... yeah so what i was trying to say is whenever you pass a character or a short variable or a bool variable in a function parameter Mm -hmm. all these uh, gets promoted to an integer though you are passing a character it will be converted as integer though you are passing it as a short variable it will be converted as okay uh, as an integer okay not as a even though you pass a character it is treated as a string in a function parameter Okay. Okay. Compiler automatically converts a character passed function to a integer. an integer. So we need to cast it by saying that though it is an integer, mm -hmm. I am casting it back as if it is a character and store it in a serial. So by promotion rule, this is more legal. So char or char serial. why uh, have i done this because i know that whenever you pass a character it will be converted as a an integer but while storing it i want to store it as if it is a character so i'll cast an integer to a character over this is how you perform a cast so casting is a technique by which you can promote or demote an expression so double can be casted to an integer and in that case you lose the mantis exponent format or you can promote an integer to be casted to be something like a double and so and so okay okay yeah. when, when, where i mean where can we use this uh, like see you know say sometimes you know you are getting the data in real number but you are only worried about the integers not the decimal values so you need to perform a cast something like that. you you do not want to you know take care of the right hand side value so you will cast that yeah. or if you are getting a character you want to promote it to an integer you know my uh, my hardware is an always an integer but the data is coming from an external world is a character so what to do promote it so cast it to an integer and store it okay got it okay so whenever you expect you know that there are mismatch in an interface to ensure that they connect to each other and store the data you will perform a cast okay okay yeah 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 so it is all for that promotion and demotion for intercompatibility chart okay yeah so now after this i think we should also print this and verify and the the third one so character is what mod c and i'll say it's a c data
There we go. Yeah, yeah. See data. Yeah. Now, I think the long will also be the same thing. Integer will also be the same thing. So, I can skip this, right? Yeah, yeah. So, we will not print them, we'll just convert and leave it. What I mean by this? Let's stay here. Here, there's no casting not required because you can perform directly. We're expecting it as a long. And I'll also say V underscore A an integer. Right? Yeah. Now we are getting into printing what? An evaluation. So now how do you why did we went to these two steps so that AP can actually move forward to the next parameter? If I don't do that, and if I treat this one itself to be in structure, it will fail, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I progressed it. And I said AP, and now I will say that it is a device type. Now, how do you know that it is a device type? I need to ensure that structure is declared before, right? So I'll go to line number three and paste it. Otherwise, compiler will not know where it is. Where is this device coming? Correct? Right? Yeah. yeah. I'll say that I'm expecting a device and then I'll say a dev. Now, what is a dev? I know it has to be a structure. I'm expecting a user will pass what? A structure device dev. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then what I do, I just uh, print them now. The device. Name is mod s and device id is mod d. And how do I capture it? Dev dot device name, which is in this case dev name. Uh, uh, and dev dot divide in this case that's all okay let's try this perfect yes device name is one and device id is 100 yes so what you are seeing you are seeing that you know you can not only pass those parameters, but you can also close them. Now you see, I don't need the anything. I will close the point, you know, null it. So AP will be pointing to null from here onwards. That I don't need to move forward. So even though you have some more, you know, it's possible that you might have some more parameters here. Okay. But I don't care. My work is a user can keep passing, but I will say that, see, I am going to take care of only these parameters. That's all. I will give the document. You keep passing whatever, you will get undefined behavior because of that. Okay. You will only get these values. I don't care about anything beyond that. Correct? Yes. So this is how you can actually ask a user to do the check. So there's some assignments which I have placed for you. Okay, sure. Yeah, you know, where you can try a sum of all the numbers. You know? So assignment could be like this. I'll just give you here itself, sum. And I can say the sum of all the doubles past is mod LF. Okay. And you should try to complete this and come back. I'll say 1.2 comma 34.5 comma. Don't see the internet by the way. Okay. See, because see, internet you can see later when you have some serious stuff coming up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, when you construct it is more, I just want you to st stress yourself a bit. Sure. sure. Yeah. 
so till you find you know zero dot zero mm-hmm. or any string after this you don't care whatever they pass got it yeah. the moment you find what i'm giving a condition to come up below the moment you find it is zero dot zero just below so i need the sum of 1.2 plus 3.34.5 plus 45.5 plus 4.6 got it yeah and you have to use what variable argument list okay, okay. so this will be your first coding assignment And you know, uh, please do not see any internet or something. Oh no! I'll, I'll, yeah, I think yeah. I have. Even though you struggle, it is fine. It's not not a worry. We can recomplete it. Sure. Because yeah. what I want to see is that how are you approaching? Can can you are you getting confident in typing your own code? Are you doing some mistakes there? And I will guide you to complete this in case if you could not. Okay. Yeah. So next time, what we are going to do is this yeah. code is going to be now updated in uh, cloud anyway. Okay. so i am going to upload it resume this so in a minute or so this code should be there available in your uh, cloud okay. what you do is in this weekend you know it's a long weekend i know yeah if you can you know spare some one hour or so some yeah i mean yeah planning to spend at least a day um, yeah i mean even couple of hours at least one activity should be to complete this task okay, okay. yeah and if you are you know because see when you see somebody else typing it looks like you have got it yeah but uh, and when you type it you will feel like too many you know irritation will start coming and that is what you need to overcome yes so the next session when i will be starting on monday okay my aim is to start with the same assignment and see where you are okay sure and if you are not able to do you share your screen i will guide you and you type it okay yeah so we will change the course of that. now you should start writing Sure. and i will be guiding okay okay sure. so we'll take example on that okay fine right. yeah so i think for today what we have done is we have come to all the formal concepts of what functions can be okay i missed out a recursive function okay a recursive function is something which we often tend not to use in embedded okay because it ends up to using a lot of stack but by name i am sure you are aware that you know if a function call itself it is referred as recursion right yeah. yeah and recursion is good for you know deep programming or you know goal based program it so, means when i am not sure that when will my you know goal be reached okay okay but i know the steps are something which is common then i use something like a recursion function for example a fibonacci series you know most of the euler's algorithm are pretty complex in nature Are you aware about Euler? Um, e U L A R Euler's. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a very popular mathematician, right? Yeah. And you know he has something like six hundred. You know, if you want to practice and you want to be a code guru, mm-hmm. uh, you must uh, be able to write your own source code in Euler's algorithms. Implement all their algorithms. So roughly, like you know, six uh, thousand plus uh, mathematical expressions are there, oh, okay. which is listed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have uh, approached roughly some four and a half thousand when I was, you know, in my peak. Uh, and then you know, you you start getting mundane at some point of time. Only anyway, way I can achieve it if I need it, okay. kind of thing. And then you drop on yourself, yeah. but. it it taught me a lot of intuitive way of you know writing programs or using the codes and all. Okay. okay so that's another way for you to become you know the the see the coders are the wizard for the tomorrow you know it's like a magical power mm-hmm. and uh, it's like you know having ha- having that kind of a, uh, a mantra for you you know like you you can change the world by if you are a coder you know it's, it's the best magical power you have. Yeah, yeah, and 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 to get into that mode, it is only you know one one person which will stop you to doing that is you. Yes. So you have to overcome that by you know having these small small steps, and then overcome. So, so no coder were born coders. People keep punching these lines in front of hey this guy is a born coder okay Linus was a born coder not real. 
they learned computer programs they got influenced in the early age so they could you know enhance their potential yeah but if you look at the another aspects of it like einstein or someone their actually peak started he was just a, a store guy who was working on a patent company long long back yeah. and and then suddenly after 40 he started realizing into some concept and then you know all these four or five theories happened theory of relativity and emc square and and then, then that changed the entire gambit of his persona right true yeah so for the next generation and the current generation uh, you will find that majority of the it based business mm -hmm. or even a non it based business are finally software driven yes and coder plays a very vital role you know today we have got agents for coders who talks to you know the companies rather than coders it's like a new new celebrity kind of a stuff mm -hmm. yeah seriously the good ones mm -hmm. in us no they don't mind paying you you know 500k usd an annum or something if you're a good coder like in google or something okay. very easy yeah. if you're an average coder or something you know like average plus coder or something you know it's like 80k to an 115k 150k so it's a very normal norms yeah you know usd is very it's very usual okay but anything above 150k 180k 200k 300k usd in an annum it directly shows that this is a uh, at par coders you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. most of the good google coders are being paid 300k plus minimum oh okay yeah, yeah. right so. yeah and and you know it's not like uh, that, that that you cannot get that on a functional rule by the way you know yeah so i, I so you know knowing a coding is one thing and being developing a passion for coding is another thing true uh, and you know in in any of the substance if you can you know start getting into passion euler is the first foremost hurdle which a good coder must pass if they can do that any hackathon or you know uh, hacker earth they can crack it okay because it builds that you know basic logic right yeah and uh, I think that's a good reference for you also. Whenever you get some, yeah. Uh, see, always it starts. It will be a very slow. You know, uh, when you might feel. You know, we all feel something. Even I feel mm -hmm. still that you know. Hey, I, I could learn so many more new things, and you know, and I'm aging up. But but we need to do that. Other, if we do not disrupt ourselves, it it will disrupt us anyway. Correct. Yeah. So you might think today that hey, I'm. she's very crazy and i am so behind and how do i you know overcome this mm -hmm. but it's all that you know step by step only first year you will feel like you are very very unaware about c mm -hmm. and the graph of learning will be very fast after second year third year you will feel like hey this guy knows the same thing which i know what's so is a big deal about it yeah and then after two years you will feel like hey i am i am encompassing him and then you will go beyond him you know so it is all about persisting with that language as long as you can but with your passion yeah right i i hope you don't take this yeah. as a pre session no, 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 I mean, i'm just you, trying to you you uh, you some data i mean perfectly yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's true i mean uh, so somewhere you know you try this and there is a saying no you know uh, there is an ad which i often say that you know there's an spin off ad spin off ad Uh, which keeps coming they say that small milate jao and large banate jao so you know mm -hmm. uh, you make 30 30 ml and then you make 60 ml and then 90 ml you take one shot the entire khamba you will get burned up right yes yeah. so you know the knowledge building stack for programming is also like that choose any language but it has to be incremental development and slow okay. and if you can persist this with one year or two year we know i mean she will be like so other seniors will also have a j on you that like, okay where it is where are you coming from so it is natural process true yeah. just persistence yeah. so give it a shot i'm not trying to motivate you for this assignment or something okay yeah yeah I'll, I'll, still, I'll, yeah i mean still you can come without doing the assignment it's fine with me don't no no, no offense there <laughs> it's not an ms class or so okay you have you will get credit or something nothing of that sort <laughs> but yeah I, i would 
still going to work. And yeah. So give it a shot if you get. Otherwise, you know, we will uh, sort it as a classroom assignment uh, when you come back. Okay. okay. The sure. first thing. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. So from now, we will have one hour of session from my side. And yeah. then I'll give you some code challenges, which you will be doing. And I'll be assisting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then let's sign out today and have some yeah. good fun. If yeah. you are eligible to vote, kindly go and vote it out. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to check. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so I, I'm just uh, yeah. So otherwise, enjoy yourself and have a lovely long weekend and come back on Monday. Bye bye. Yeah. Thanks, Anish. Thank you. Have a nice. Uh, Thanks, man. Bye bye. See.